Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. This is episode 208, and this person that's coming on here has been on the show since the very beginning and has made several appearances. Uh, so Jim Beaver was first featured on episode four, and honestly, he got me connected to uh, Amy Hood and uh, several other people on the show. And it, either way, I kept having him come back on. It's for obvious reasons. But he was on episode 50, then 100, then 136, and then 176, and now 208. But this time, it is a whole new reason why he is here. Now, we talk about a ton of things on here. You know, he's now the brand manager for Vision Wheels. We talk about that. He is a agent for Mia Chapman. We talk about that, which is new stuff. He has a bunch of podcasts that he's involved with now. We talk about that. But the main reason why I had him on the show this time is to talk about esports and how motorsports marketing and sponsorship has become a big part of esports now. And that's just a whole new look on everything that we've been talking about on the show. But we found a lot of the same things apply. But you'll find me in the episode asking these questions and just most of it is just me being like, oh my goodness, like this is wild. Um, but either way, stay tuned for that. I'm going to go through a couple things first before we get into the show with Jim. Um, first thing, four wheel parts. Uh, they have been with us for, it's coming up on a year here pretty soon. And they continue to amaze me. They're out there with their marketing techniques and just crushing it. Like, they are all over the place. I think I even mentioned that in this show, too, because, you know, one of Jim's shows is uh, powered by 4 Wheel Parts as well. Um, but they've got a lot of good stuff going on right now. They're basically running this New Year, New Rig promotion. And with that comes savings on wheels and tires and which are probably that's probably one of the most popular upgrades for people to do i i would imagine um and then a, a reminder as you're looking through stuff adding stuff to your car you can always do financing there's six month promotional financing available right now now you got to get approved but you get it and uh either way check that out let me know if you ever got questions uh, or head over to fourwheelparts.com and as usual, I would love, love, love to get your feedback. Head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating review. If you don't know how to do that, let me know. Uh, you can always shoot me a message, josh at sponsoredriderclubpodcast.com or shoot me a DM on any of the social media sites. And then whatever podcast platform you use, go ahead and subscribe. Um, even if you're listening to this right now regularly on like YouTube or on the website, pull out your phone, you know, whatever app that you use on, the, on your phone for podcasts, subscribe to the show, it'll download automatically, it's the, definitely the easiest way of doing it. All right, I need to take a minute to tell you about some of the awesome companies that make this show possible, and then we'll hop into the show. Amsoil, they provide amazing lubrication products, and they're a company that runs on freedom. You can find out more at amsoil.com slash rider. Solderweld, they produce game-changing metal bonding technology, and they're ready to rescue your race. Topthepodium.com, they're experts in motorsport sponsorship, website creation, and resume building. And then Crash Act Industries, they provide human protection and extreme racing products. And then at this point, I want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK USA, Studboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. Now we are going to hop in the show, but first off, I've got a little tidbit of sponsorship advice coming from Joe Sylvester, and this is your high octane coffee marketing tune up. What's up, guys? Joe Sylvester here with your high octane coffee marketing tune up of the day. Today, I want to talk about sponsor attraction. Sponsor attraction to me is a much better tactic than quote unquote sponsor hunting. You want to build your brand. You want to establish yourself in the racing community uh, and in the marketing uh, realm of things. And, you know, as a respected individual, as a professional, you don't want to just keep knocking on doors and hoping somebody answers. You want the sponsors to come to you. That is the most ideal situation for you to be in, and it's the most ideal situation for them. Believe it or not, companies do have 
you know, people that work for them uh, or even owners of companies, they take notice on social media. They see what's going on and they see the brands. They see the people that stand out. Make yourself stand out from the rest. Be very active on social media. Be very active with your press releases. Try to grow your email database. And like I said, build your brand. Make your brand something that a company would be proud to be associated with. And like I said, when they come to you, it's a much better feeling than sitting there all night long sending out 100 emails. I know this from experience. Trust me. I'd like to say this is unique, but you've been on the show now. This is going to be your sixth time. So episode four, 50, 100, and then we broke that 50 mark there and did 136 and then 176. And yeah, you're back again. This is Jim Beaver. Um, glad to have you on again. We've got some new topics to talk about. We're going to hit esports in this show. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time getting caught up on all the cool stuff you've been doing. But before we get even that far, Jim, just remind folks, who are you? Yeah. Well, before we get to that, you just mentioned something. At first, I go, man, it's crazy. I've been on the show this many times, but I got to give you props, Josh, because not many podcasters last as long as you have to be to have that many. No, like seriously, to have that many yeah. episodes under your belt, that says something about what you're doing for the, for the motorsports community. And, um, dude, that, I mean, I know we had talked, you know, back when you started, well, you know, I think it was right in the first couple episodes and yeah. you're picking my brain. Congrats to you for the success. Cause not a lot of people can turn things into what you have, you know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. This is going to be episode two zero eight. Uh, and, it's weird. I did I I don't even know if I've told you this story, Jim. And I, I shared it with folks kind of periodically, so that if they've listened to the show long enough, they heard snippets. The very first show that I released was it was kind of on accident. I was doing a test run. I was planning on getting you know ten or so episodes kind of queued up ahead of time. You know, tweak them, real figure out am I really going to release this or not? And my first guest, uh, Tristan Lowe, him and I were like working on this together, and I I did a test released and I, I said hey check the link out make sure you can listen to it well he posted it on twitter and uh you know i got a couple hundred downloads right away and i got <laughs> super excited and uh i was like well we're not pulling it back now and yeah. you know i had set out to say i'm gonna do at, you know one a month or sorry one a week and uh i was like well i better go ahead and find another guest <laughs> And do another show. Um, so yeah, I got on it after that and I've released at least one every week, uh, since then. That was December of 2016. Well, and I don't think people realize how hard it is to do that, you know, and I know we'll get into to talking what we're going to talk about in a minute, but it's funny because I've got a good friend, Rob, Rob, uh, Rob D'Amico, and uh, he was a radio host, uh, nationally syndicated on Fox Sports for years doing NASCAR and IndyCar and, he was kind of one of my mentors when I first got into things. And, you know, I was a nobody from, you know, off road. And like he, I was calling into his national show and doing little 10 minute segments and things like that, you know, and uh, he and I were talking and now he's starting to do a segment on my show because he kind of had health issues and I was getting back into it with a podcast, mm -hmm. but he and I were talking and he, and we, we were talking and you can attest to this. There's not many of us that can, but to do a motorsport show once a week, for, you know, an hour, give or take, like, mm -hmm. it's not easy booking mm -hmm. the guests, like, and having the drive to actually do it. There's very few of us. I mean, I throw the speed freaks into the equation and stuff like that, you know, and some other podcasters, but there's not a whole lot of people that can actually do that, you know? And it's like, it, it, dude, it's a commitment. I don't think people realize, you know, it may just be an hour audio, but all the prep and the organizing and everything yeah. that goes into it. And then yeah. post-production, dude, it's, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot of fun, but there's sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how I got these shows out. Like, it seems like I'm always down to the wire, <laughs> you know, getting the show out. And like, what just, wh where have I been the past three years? I don't know. I, I don't feel like I've slept at all. That's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> who needs sleep though, right? That's, it's overrated. Sleep um, when you're dead. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, your whole background is, is kind of mixed in throughout the shows. Episode four, we got pretty deep, but I mean, that was almost three years ago. So there's a lot that's happened. Um, so yeah, I mean, tell us like, what are the, you've got like 115 podcasts now that you produce yourself. <laughs> so like what, what, what shows are you involved with right now? Uh, what are the, some of the things that you're doing? I mean, let's, let's just, let's start breaking that down, get people caught up. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know. I think I just run scared all the time that, uh, I'm. <laughs> 
I'm not going to have a job. So I just say <laughs> yes to everything and all these opportunities. And, uh, uh, you know, and I'm still racing full time and obviously doing my show. And then I've got my, uh, off-road podcast, uh, presented by four Wheel parts. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, I've got my project action on podcast one. I'm looking at doing another show. My good buddy, Jonathan Coyle. Um, he's, um, he's a social media influencer in the fitness world. His wife, Natalie, even Marie, she was a former WWE wrestler. Now she's an mm-hmm. actress and, uh, we've got to be really good friends. And, uh, and that'll be like a pop culture, pop, literally nothing like I've ever done before. Yeah. Talking video games, movies, like just stupid random stuff, Yeah, uh, which will be fun because I can kind of completely, you know, go off into left field. But um, so I'm still doing all that racing. I know I've, I just got done with the Parker 250. I'm actually doing King of the Hammers coming up. And so uh, kind of I still got the trophy truck, but mainly switch gears into doing uh, UTV racing with Polaris, uh, which has been a, a ton of fun. And they've been a big supporter of just everything I do. And. You know, uh, I actually, we produce some podcasts for some people. Um, uh, the answer is yes. A good friend of mine, Jim Riley. Yep. And then there's another one called Baja Sessions. Um, so I, I, we produce and distribute those. And then also distribute some shows, uh, Racer Magazine, Kelly Crandall. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's got the Racing Writers podcast. We uh, distribute that for Kelly. Uh, there's the Scene Vault. It's a NASCAR history podcast. Uh, we distribute that. Bruce Martin's Honda IndyCar Report. We produce that or uh, we distribute that. And then, uh, um, trying to think. Oh yeah, I racing. They've got the I racing downshift. Oh, yeah. The whole reason I'm yep. on this show to talk <laughs> esports, but uh, we distribute that for I racing also. So um, yeah, we're pretty deep into that. Obviously, I've got my whole esports team now, and I've got about 15, 16 uh, guys signed to that. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, one of the things I'm most excited about. We got a media company. We do a lot of uh, uh, just work for uh, you know whether it be graphic design, PR, a lot of stuff for, for a lot of different people. Um, but one of my, you know, one of my favorite things I've uh, taken on this year is, is, you know, with all my, I don't even want to call it expertise, but all the marketing and stuff like that, that I've done, uh, mm-hmm. and contracts I've been through, uh, I, I signed, uh, signed with, uh, Mia Chapman, uh, Red mm-hmm. Bull's youngest, uh, motorsports female athlete, uh, this year to be her agent or manager. Um, yeah. so, uh, working with Mia, developing sponsorship, you know, helping her with her media and her marketing and her film projects. And she was just in sports illustrated for kids. Yeah. Uh, this I past, uh, it just, yeah, it just dropped, I think about a week ago on the newsstands. Yeah. I didn't have a copy yet. I've just got the pictures, but, yeah. uh, so working with her and then, uh, it's actually kind of trickling out. We haven't really advertised it much, but vision wheel. I've, uh, this is how one of these relationships goes full circle. Uh, I've been working with vision wheel for, uh, uh, for about three years now as an athlete and, uh, their marketing director, uh, went to, uh, you know, left the company. Uh, I was on good terms. Um, and, uh, they kind of went without a brand manager for about, uh, for about six months. And, uh, you know, and we started talking and, uh, it was one of those where, uh, I came on as a consultant and, uh, now actually, uh, an athlete and the brand manager for yeah. uh, Verb Vision Wheel. So, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. in addition to everything else, we've got that going too. So, uh, it's been, been kind of fun to see the corporate side of things, you know, and, and I think I've been a good liaison with the new athletes and teams also because I can kind of wear both hats and yeah. see both sides, you know. So, I think it's so far we're only about, a, about about two months into this, but I think it's been, uh, been pretty solid so far. No, that's awesome. I, I got to hang out with the Vision Wheel crew, uh, in 2018 at Vegas Torino, it was kind of random. Like, uh, there's a there's a, a little uh, hotel casino right next door to to where Vegas Torino is. After people who don't know, and they have a Denny's in there. Like for whatever reason, they got a Denny's in there, and well, I, that's where I sat down. Like these guys were eating, and I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I sit down with you?" And they're like, "Yeah." I was like, "Oh, everybody here is wearing a Vision shirt and or hat," and I was like. Tell me about what, who you are. Like we're yeah we're a vision. Like, oh yeah, sweet. So we we got to eat uh, eat some some good old fashioned Denny's breakfast together and uh, you know build some relationships. And then Todd Robinson was on my show uh, the next uh, later that day I think. Um, so yeah, it was good times. Yeah, T Rob, I love Todd. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, yeah we've uh, we've had we've had a lot of fun together. Yeah, good deal. Um, and actually, I mean, you mentioned uh, Jim Riley's podcast too. Uh, the answer is yes in Baja Sessions, and he's been on the show. It's been a little while, but um, yeah, he's a he's an awesome guy. I mean, that dude is smart. Like, it's a little uncomfortable yeah, how smart he is. Smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, you know, he's he's you know, and the crazy thing is, he just turned fifty, and he started so many companies yeah. and uh, sold them. And his brothers, uh, you know, his brothers one of the uh, top executives at In and Out, and oh. uh, it's just. 
Yeah, it's crazy. And he's one of my very dear friends. And uh, we talk quite a bit, you know, because I help him with his podcast. And uh, just uh, he, like you said, he's next level, next level, wicked smart, you know. And uh, he's kind of moved out of off-road a little bit. And now yeah. he's into Spartan racing. He just moved to Montana and stuff like that. But he's all in. And he's like, he's one of the, like, the top three ranked Spartan racers in the world. Oh, over really? 50 and, I like, knew he did it. Yeah, he's... Wow. Yeah, no, he, but you know him. If he's I'm number do it, two, he's be like it's, all in, you know. It's not a big deal. I'm number two though. It's it's really it's not a competition, <laughs> dude. <but>. It, <laughs> I, I might be like number two thousand and two or something. Like I probably I, I don't even rank. Man. I, I can like guarantee that I could not complete any of those Spartan challenges. Like I would just give up very early on because <laughs> they're intense, dude. I, <laughs> I, I might be able to finish a race, but it's going to take me like four or five days. To yeah, finish it's good, yeah. So I'm going to have to stop, have something to eat, you know, relax, stretch some, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's cool. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you've been doing, and uh, you know, I, I really wanted to dig into some of that background there because it's a good example for you know riders and racers out there that are. You know, figuring, well, what if I, what if I can't race another couple of years or what if I do race and I still want to expand my portfolio? Like what are other ways that I can add value for my partners? Um, and, and, and that's, you've given several examples, you know, um, bringing on a, a manager for, uh, or, or becoming a manager for another racer is, is a pretty big deal. And then, you know, you can now connect with even more people. Uh, outside of your, you know, your current partners, and um, then you get to see a growth and, and kind of pass on some of that knowledge too to a an up and coming racer, which is great. Um, I love that you've kind of delved into other podcasts and supported them and built kind of a network around it. Um, and obviously the relationship with Vision Wheel expanded on that. So these are all really good examples. Um, how you know whether it's after racing or while you're racing, um, it's it's just uh, another way to expand and build your brand. So I, I wanted to hear that, and I want people to listen to that and think about it for themselves. Like, how, you know, what does this mean for me? Um, how might I change what I'm doing now? Uh, how might I change my future goals uh, to to do things kind of like this? So if you're interested in that stuff. Well, you know, and I think, you you know, and obviously just talking about some of the guests, you know, on your show, you look at somebody like Sarah Price, you know, and she's uh, racing, but she's also got her stunt work, you know what I mean? And then she's also got this business with painting cars and now she's got girls under her. She's training, you know, and she's, and Sarah and I've had these conversations, like she's setting herself up because if the racing dries up, what's left, you know? Right, and I think, right. I think that's key for any athlete. You look at Rob Gronkowski, you know, and he yeah. retired, was like, Oh, he retired early. Well, Gronk did, but you know what? He was set up like he oh, stashed yeah. a ton of money away. And, uh, he was living on basically peanuts because he had all his money invested in like, you know, and he's an entrepreneur and in businesses and right. like, you know, he walked away and the guy's like 30 and living his best life right now outside of the NFL yeah. and Dale yeah. Earnhardt Jr. Another guy, you know, he's got his race team. He's got a podcast and media company, um, Danica Patrick, she's got wineries and clothing brands and, you know, and, and all this happens when the money's good. And when business is good, you know, that's when you do it. You don't wait until, you're done and you're on the outs and then it's right. like, Oh, what do I do now? You know, right. you set yourself up when you can. And so you've got, you know, kind of that, that safety. I don't want to say safety net, but you know, you, you've got what's next. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think Shaq was that same way. Like Shaq owns, I don't know how many businesses and he's just, he just figured it out. Like he just did it. I don't know. It's <laughs> impressive stuff. So, um, well, that's good. I, I definitely wanted to kind of catch up on some of those things. I'm going to give you a chance here to kind of shout out some of your, you know, your current sponsors and partners. Then we'll take a break. Um, and then come back and really hit this esports thing pretty hard. Cause that's something we have never talked about on the show. And I'm like, I, I, I claim to, to be a Gary Vanderchuk fan and I haven't talked about esports on my show yet. Like I gotta, I gotta make this happen. Um, but <laughs> before, I, before I break, uh, just for a minute, kind of share with us some of your, uh, your current sponsors and your, your partners that you work with. Oh, well, you know, I guess starting with top Polaris razor, general mm-hmm. tire, vision wheel, um, uh, dirt fish, obviously four to P four parts, mm-hmm. uh, rigid industries. Uh, um, that's one of those interesting things where I was with them for a long time and then, uh, they shifted uh, company focus. And then mm-hmm. uh, a couple years later we left on good terms and we're back with them. I'm really awesome. excited to have them back on 
Ford, uh, Dirt Fisher High School. I mean, uh, we've got, I mean, I can go, I think we've I know, got about 20 different brands we work yeah, with. But, there's a lot. Um, just very, very fortunate to work with some amazing brands and some great people, you know. And, uh, um, yeah, just yeah, very fortunate to be where I'm at. No, that's awesome. And I'll tell you what, Rigid has been very active. Um, it seems like I hear about Rigid or, you know, Brett Carpenter, who's been on the show before, um, from Rigid, like, or see them. Like, they're just, they are all over the place right now. Same with Four Wheel Parks. I mean, they're part of this show and, and your show, and they're just like, you can't turn a corner right now without seeing something about Rigid or Four Wheel Parks, which I like. You know, it's just, it's wild. Yeah, no, it's, they're, they're both killing it, you know, and, uh, they've got, you know, they've got, you know, they're active with athletes and influencers and, uh, you know, and, and content and making dynamic content. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, both of them are just, they're, they're playing the game right now. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, hey, I'm going to take a quick break, thank the sponsors for this podcast, and then we'll hop back into the main event here and hit on, uh, the esports topic that we're all, uh, craving to hear about. Safety is our overriding priority. I hear it all the time, but I have to ask myself, is it though? Is that the first thing we think of? Is that the first thing you think of? Over the past couple of years, we've seen the performance of production UTVs increase, I don't know, somewhere around 350%. That means these machines give us a lot more opportunity to have fun and win races, but it also unfortunately gives us new opportunities to crash. And that's why we have partnered with Crash Addict Industries. The owner, Travis Pointer, became very accustomed to crashing early in his career. He saw it as inevitable, and he set out to make the process safer. With a passion for racing, welding, and engineering, Crash Attic Industries now produces full cage and other protection systems intentionally designed to protect you during an accident on the track. They also offer a line of human protection products through their vendors. Do this for me at this point. If you're racing with a stock cage right now, please go check out CrashAddict.com and see, at least just see what they have to offer. Even if you choose to go with a different company, please... Please, please make safety your overriding priority. Two questions I get continuously about this show and about sponsorship is, do I need my own website and do I need a resume? The answer is, in my opinion, yes to both. And that's why we partner with TopThePodium.com. Now, if you want to see an example of what a professional website and what a professional resume looks like, you got to check out TopThePodium.com. They did my website. The Sponsored Rider Club Podcast website is SponsoredRiderClubPodcast.com. That was created by Jeff Vanistall of TopToPodium.com. I think it's awesome. I get a lot of good feedback about it. And there's a number of other websites out there that Jeff has produced that are just phenomenal. So I think it's important in this world of social media where you have control of your content that's what a website does. It gives you full control. We don't know what Facebook's going to do sometimes. We don't know what Instagram's going to do. We don't know what Twitter's going to do. So if we don't have that central location to direct people and house our content, there is some risk that we incur. So I strongly recommend getting a website, talking to toptopodium.com. And then the resume, again, is massive. And if you want to stand out, get it done professionally. And honestly, it is one of the best ways to step up your game and present yourself in the best way possible. Let's talk about your truck for a minute. You can count on it to haul your vehicle and your gear to the track or to the trailhead, but I bet you never think about the motor oil. Here's why you should. Your oil is the only thing preventing your engine from wearing out and breaking down. To keep your truck running strong, look for an oil with added wear protection. Like... For example, Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil. It delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than is required by the leading industry standard. It provides the next level protection today's demanding engines need to keep running for years and to keep effortlessly towing your ride to the track. Go to amsoil.com slash rider to find out more. Make the switch to Amsoil Synthetic Motor Oil today to keep your vehicle running great. 
Hey guys, George Hamill here to talk about Solder Weld's new off-road repair kit. If you're a racer of any type or an off-road enthusiast like myself, you're going to want to take a close look at this product that bonds metal on the spot. Solder Weld has combined some of their most elite products into one small kit that fits perfectly under your seat or strapped to a roll cage and allows you to make some insane fixes anywhere you go. How many of us have been in a race or out on the trail and got a rock chip in a radiator or brake line? We have seen a top tier desert race team at the 2019 min 400 taken out by a simple rock to the radiator if they had an off-road repair kit on board they could have been back up and running in just minutes the kit includes everything you need to work on dirty aluminum stainless steel copper and many other metals solder welds cutting edge technology allows you to make these fixes with extremely low heat and incredibly high tensile strength leaving you a lasting fix every time don't be that guy broke down on the side of the trail Get your off-road repair kit today, and your friends will thank you. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're in the main event now, and I'm going to talk about something completely different for the show, eSports. Um, so Jim's got some experience with that now. You've been building it. There's a lot that's going on, and probably like 30% of the people, maybe even more than that, don't that are listening right now don't even know what it is why we should care about it, why are we talking about it. Um, so let's start with that. I mean, what is eSports? And I mean, in, in, in your specific realm of eSports, what do you focus on? Yeah, well, my specific realm, we're, we're focusing on sim racing right now, but eSports is huge. And I and honestly, I am just like a lot of these people, or I was a year ago, just like a lot of the people tuning in right now, because if you would ask me a year and a half ago, oh, you know, esports, you can be involved in like eh, video games. Like I play video games, right? Yeah. But like here and there, but I'm like, yeah, no. And you know, I, I the first time I actually really started paying attention to esports, I had uh, she's become a really good friend of mine, Sydney Goodman. She's a uh, host for IGN.com dot com, mm-hmm. Daily Fix, and she's kind of the female face of gaming, I guess. And uh, I had her on my podcast. And we started talking, and she worked with Red Bull in the esports division. And I've actually been to Red Bull HQ and seen their their esports facility and it's insane um it's it's just crazy what red bull's invested in the esports and you know talking with her and you know she's way into it and everything and i started kind of kind of blip my radar let's yeah. put it that way and so i started watching and watching and uh i racing came to me uh my employee chris uh also does some work with i racing he kind of splits his time between the two and uh so he's you know he we started talking and i racing wanted to do a podcast where talk, started talking and how can we do kind of a trade out? And then uh, we started looking and they had uh, their e NASCAR, it's what NASCAR sanctions. They had, they had an open franchise there. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll be interested in that. So, uh, you know, we kind of put this deal together where I got this NASCAR franchise. Well, little did I know a month later, they announced this NBC sports television package and I've got two signed drivers and, um, and like all this stuff. And now I've got two NASCARs legitimately running live on NBC sports. So I'm like, Oh wow. There's like, <laughs> this is big. Yeah. This is huge. Like, you know, the, my NASCARs get more publicity than my actual real race programs do. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. this is nuts. You know, the, and so, uh, you know, we kind of went into it. I got into it about three or four months and then I started looking and there's a rally cross world championship. There's uh dirt track, you know, sprint car world championships. There's all these world championships. And I started looking and I'm like, Oh, how can I get deeper? And I, I just had these two signed guys with my NASCAR team who have uh, been amazing to work with Michael Griglia and Eric Smith. And so, uh, Chris told me, he's like, well, there's this, uh, this team called reignition and they've got like five guys in these world championships and started looking and they kind of had a little social presence and they, they were trying to do things and they, you know, they had some super talented guys and they had like 14 guys or 13 guys on their roster. And so, um, they actually, uh, Connor, Connor, who was one of the guys that actually, he races rally cross uh, with, uh, in I racing, he was in the world championship. He hit me up about, Hey, do you think you'd sponsor my car? Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, he's like, I listen to your show all the time. And he's like, you know, I think it'd be a good fit. And I started looking into it and, you know, and it's getting closer. And I was, he's like, are you interested? And I said, you know, I, I ended up said, just hang tight. And so kind of the guy that founded this team, I called him and got a hold of him. And I, you know, we started there. Like, well, here's our proposal, our deck. And I was like, uh, you know, he's like, do, do you, you think you'd be interested? And I said, well, I'm going to do one better. I was like, why don't I just buy you guys? And he goes, what are you talking about? And he's <laughs> like, uh, I was like, I'll just buy the team. And he goes, buy it. It's like, we never thought about selling. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. Yeah. And he's like, okay. He's like, I don't know what it's worth. And I threw a number at him yeah. and he goes, 
I think that'll work and we'll just split the money <laughs> up between all the team guys. Yeah. And so all of a sudden now I signed these all, all 14 of them to contracts that never had a contract before. And we rebranded it Jimby Resports. And then, then it was like, all right, I got my two guys based on NASCAR TV. I've got 15 guys, you know, in these other four world championships, four or five world championships. Some of them are developmental drivers. So we've got this ecosystem now. The developmental drivers actually help data setups for the pro guys or the world championship drivers, and they're working their way up the ladder into world championship drivers. Everybody signed the contracts. They get performance in- incentives for podiums, wow. uh, you know, and things like that. And it's just uh, it's been an amazing run. And uh, I've actually got a guy working full time just on esports media. He wow. just does liveries, social content, videos. We've got, uh, it's become a big, big deal. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is we own the liveries. It's not like when you turn on, uh, it's not like the old NASCAR games on the PlayStation or Nintendo 64, where it's just, it is what it is. You drive, you know, Dale Earnhardt's car or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like we actually own the liveries, you know what I mean? So we can actually go and tweak them exactly what we want. And, you know, and, and with the NASCAR, you know, we're getting 150,000 people tuned into the live stream and that's not counting the NBC television numbers. You know, you look at rallycross, I think we were averaging on our rallycross races, uh, 35,000 viewers a race to our rallycross races. So, um, you know, we're talking real numbers, you know what I mean? And, and people tuned in and stuff. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, we started tweaking our program where we could bring in, uh, you know, partners at a financial level and things like that, that, you know, that this demographic hits and, uh, you know, you look at monster and rockstar and Red Bull and they're all involved in esports. Well, it's because, you know, it's the under 35 demographic that's Mm -hmm. really, really into this and it hits, you know, it hits the exact, you know, target that they want, you know, so a lot of these companies they're looking for, uh, you know, more, uh, a youthful type audience, you know, it hits it, you know, smack dab right in the face. So, um, yeah, we've, you know, we, we've, our marketing program are, is, is, you know, we keep continuing to step it up. I know on the NASCAR thing, I'm in, it's kind of humbling. Like I'm a franchise owner in this series. It's got, you know, Dale Earnhardt Jr. It's got Woods oh, Brothers. Wow. It's got Roush Fenway. It's got, um, you know, Joe Gibbs Racing. You know, you start looking down, it's got Stuart Haas. And I start looking and the guys are copied on these emails from iRacing. I'm like, holy crap, these guys I looked up to and we're on the <laughs> same email chain here. Like, yeah. this is wild. You know, but it's, you know, that you've got those guys taking interest now and, you know, NASCAR is branded at E-NASCAR and they share stuff on their social media and things like that. So it's, uh, it's become big and there's this amazing ecosystem too. I mean, not just within my team, but, um, they've started bringing in, I, I helped iRacing, uh, scan some tracks for short course earlier this year and they're, they're going to be dropping and I put them in touch with the right people, but now they've got off-road short course. And now all these off-road kids stuff, Quintero's one of them. He started getting in there and mm. my guys are helping him get up to speed. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, I think Luke Knup, and I'm trying to think that there's just a, a bunch of these kids that actually really race that are now into like short course and, you know, and, and people think video games, I'm like, no, these sim rig setups these kids have are insane. And, you know, yeah. and the thing is, I, I don't actually sim race. I've sat in sims before. I don't have one because it's a rabbit hole. I really don't need to go down right now because yeah. I just don't have enough time in the day. But, uh, you know, every single part of the car can be tweaked. Gear ratios, transmission gear ratios, um, your spring rates, your valving and your shocks um ride height you know what i mean like your compression your rebound you know what i mean you can tune the engine so like everything is adjustable so it's like you need these people it's just like real real world racing you know you've got to invest the time to make these cars better and uh you know it's just uh it's been a crazy interesting whirlwind process because uh i'm probably in it not even quite a year yet you know what i mean and it's just like it's just continuing to blow up and i know before we uh got on the phone i i said sim racing and esports is where UTVs, at least in, you know, I'm talking motorsports industry. It, you know, I, oh, sim yeah. racing is where UTVs were six, seven years ago. You know, you see where UTVs are now, and I think six, seven years from now, I think sim racing is going to be in the same thing. And you know, and you know, look outside esports. I mean, or outside of sim racing, I mean, Call of Duty, Fortnite. You know, Fortnite doesn't. You know, the world champion of Fortnite didn't he just take home something like three and a half million dollars or something like that? Like, I have no idea, but I would not be surprised. <laughs> That's yeah, wild. it's crazy though. That it you know, it's like this guy, this kid. He was sixteen and won three and a half million dollars wow. in competitive Fortnite. You know, and it's like it's nuts. Esports is a big deal, but you know, there's this whole generation of kids who, uh, you know, football, basketball, baseball, hockey might not be their thing, but playing yeah. video games is. You know. Yeah, it 
it's um it's something else. I I talked about this like a little bit in a, an episode a little while back about you know future of things, and I, I kind of just hinted at it, but I, didn't, I I don't really know what it is, and this has helped me understand it better. Um, even just what you what you mentioned about the like having a full simulator, um. You know, I've, I've been around like legit simulators before and they are, they're exactly that legit. And I wasn't expecting that in this. I, I guess I was picturing like, you know, a bunch of kids sitting around with a, like a normal, you know, like a normal, I don't know, whatever kids use nowadays, a, a PlayStation 4 or whatever. And, uh, it hooked up to some sort of online program. I wasn't, I wasn't even picturing this level of technology. Um, with like a simulator or, you know, the full sim racing or whatever. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing, like simulators have been around for a while. Yeah. Um, formula one, you know, formula one, they, they've had them there. IndyCar, they've had them there for a long time. Even NASCAR, like elite, elite level motorsport has had simulators, but we were talking, these things were hundreds of thousands of oh, dollars yeah. in the, the software was you know specially developed and things like that and the thing is is technology's trickled down now you know and uh, you can go and for four or five hundred bucks you can have a legit force feedback steering wheel and pedal set and you know yeah. is that going to win you a world championship probably not but you can at least get your foot in the door you know and it's still a hell of a wow. lot cheaper than buying a real race car you know yeah. and i know like uh i was talking to uh mitchell de young's a good friend of mine and uh you know he a guy that transitioned out of real world racing into sim racing full time. And his dad actually built sim rigs. And I know like Mitchell sim rig, I think is about $25,000. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I think, uh, his dad was telling me he could do a very, very nice one for about 15, but he's like, I've built them, you know, really nice ones down two, three grand, you know, minus the computer. So, yeah. um, you know, it's how much do you want to spend? But I think, you know, the, the big story is, is it's cheaper and, it's still a lot cheaper. You know, they, there's some of these kids in NASCAR, you know, that, uh, you know, they've got a simulator that they've got $1,500, $2,000 in, you know, in their basement. And, uh, you know, they're racing on TV. Like how crazy yeah, is that? You know, it is. it is, you know, it's a whole lot cheaper for a career than, uh, actually real motorsport is, yeah. you know? Oh, I mean, it's just, it's just nuts. And I was thinking of, um, you know, if you build a race car, right, and you get some partners and you, you go through and wrap it, right? It's however much money to wrap it, usually pretty expensive. And then something changes with your sponsors or, um, or something changes with the, the color scheme you want to go with or you, you know, get it all banged up and you got to get rewrap. And with this, you're like, do, 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 you know, and it, like rewrap's done, right? I know it's more complex than that, but, um, you know, you can make these vehicles look how you want them to and put the logos how, how you want them to much easier uh, than what you would in in like, real life. I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell what's real life anymore. But, yeah, I, that's that alone is pretty interesting to me. Yeah, and, you know, like you said, there's a lot of teams that do change up their liveries. We did throwback liveries uh, for Darlington, just like they do in a real NASCAR last year for our NASCAR team. But, uh yeah, you know, and that's one of those things where you can change sponsors, you know, on a daily basis. You know, it's literally just, uh, you know, it, it, there's some skins, and you've got it. You know, it, it takes a graphic designer. Yeah, anybody can do it. But it's still hard. If you want it to look <laughs> nice, you, you use a graphic designer. You know, and yeah. Uh, um, it, it, yeah, it just, uh, yeah, truthfully, it's just really easy. You know, and you can ch- change stuff week to week. And uh, yeah, like you said, you, re- you wrap a real car, you're looking at three, four grand. You know, right. um, it, you know, for a race car and yeah, this is, you know, 30 minutes worth of work. That's crazy. And then it, it's also interesting to me that there's like multiple levels of, you know, personnel involved in this too. Like, I mean, we got graphic designers now. We got rig builders. We got the racers. We got, you know, people helping market the stuff. It's like, and you know, there's probably a bunch of techies that make it all work. Like, <sighs> I don't even know how it works. I, that's not, I, that's another thing, uh, kind of a weird question. <laughs> what kind of technology goes into making these things stream? Like, I mean, they're, they're not only playing online or uh, then they're, they're streaming it to a, just a massive audience. And, and it, you know, like you're saying with TV, that's massive. It's just the whole setup is way bigger and more complex than I think I was even imagining. 
Yeah, well, and I know, you know, I've called in, uh, they actually have a full broadcast team for, uh, for, for all the world championships, whether it be NASCAR or, uh, um, and I know NASCAR, they use some of the, uh, real television personalities, but, uh, you know, there's a full, there's a full, it's a full broadcast setup and I've done plenty of TV in my career and, uh, you know, and, and continue to do so. And, uh, it's funny because I saw what the infrastructure they have in place and obviously it's all digital and people in remote places, but very much similar to, uh, the way you call a real race. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I've called into a couple of the broadcasts and, uh, you know, and it, it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, that's the easiest way to put it. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, you know, and I think one of the big things is, is, you know, talking about, you know, the teams and all these different personnel, like you said, I mean, the setup is key in these things because just like in a real car, if it's not set up right, you're going to run around in 40th position in NASCAR where is, you know, and, and e NASCARs is very much the same way. So it's, you know, the homework behind the scenes. So, you know, I've got Eric Smith and Michael Gariglia who are, uh, you know, racing, but, you know, we've got guys spending 200 hours before a race dialing in a setup so these guys can run up front and michael and eric and neither one of them have 200 hours to burn out they're burning hours but you know they're part of uh you know this data network and these guys are just burning lap after lap to try and get these things set up and dialed in and like to me that's there's some unsung heroes and it's just kids burning the midnight oil you know what i mean uh, you know trying to get these guys you know it's very much just like a real nascar team you know but instead of somebody you know say wrenching on the engine these kids are just burning laps you know, trying to help with the setup for these guys so they can run up front. And then it, it blows my mind, even thinking about the, the person reaching out to you saying, Hey, I would love if you would sponsor my digital race team. Like, eh, it's just a whole new world. Um, and I'm thinking about my show, right? I mean, I've only, this is the first time I've really talked about it. I'm like, I need to talk more about this because there's got to be people that either want to do this or are sitting around like they've got the skill. They don't even know what to do with the skill and they, they, they might not be able to afford to even get started or they, I, I don't know. The, the whole thing is just like there, there's, there's a lot of potential out there, um, for, for this to grow and, and I, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it all the time that, that, uh, esports is, is just going to continue to grow. And it, and it makes sense. You know, a lot of the generations, um, you know, upcoming generations are very comfortable with, uh, with technology and with video games and, uh, <laughs> you know, and there's an audience. There's an audience. And it, a lot of the concepts that we talk about in the show, it applies 100%. Like it just, it just applies. Yeah, but I know the way we market our team. I I went in and I went, all right, we're going to approach this thing exactly yeah. like we would a real a real my real race program. You know, we we do pre event and post event press releases. Um, you know, we we've got a social media team. We're putting out videos, video content. You know, and and we've got special channels just for our esports, and I share some of it on my main main channels. But we we approach it just like we would a real race program. We sell sponsorship the same way. Um, you know, you get your livery in the certain spots, just like you would, you get social media activation. Uh, it's, it's very much. And I know, uh, you know, talking with an ask teams, they're starting to approach it the exact same way. It's just part of their, their package, you know, and, uh, and, you know, now they can not only sell the real world car, but it's like, Hey, we can give you more TV time. And, you know, this whole demographic of uh, younger consumers that maybe not watch real NASCAR, mm -hmm. but they do watch sim racing, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's like you said, there, there's this whole new world and, uh, you know, and it's, I, I agree with Gary, man. It's just, it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow, you know? And, and like you'd said about technology, there's this new generation coming up. I got an 11 year old daughter. I can't tell you the last time we got direct TV in my house. I can't tell you the last time she watched anything on direct TV. Oh, She's yeah. always watching YouTube or yeah. Twitch. That's yeah. all she does is watch YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. You know, she doesn't watch TV anymore. Mm -hmm. Once in a while she'll flip on Netflix. Um, but you know, most of the time it's YouTube and, you know, esports. E you know, these guys are, all they're doing is streaming on YouTube, streaming on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, one of my sons, I got, I got two kids, they're, uh, four and seven and my seven year old, I, I catch him sometimes like, what are you watching? It's, 
it's like Minecraft, you know, video game Minecraft and someone yeah. on YouTube playing that and like talking through the decisions that they're making and, you know, these different worlds that they've built. And I'm like, what in the world? Um, but yeah, it's, it's a thing. And, uh, just like every, I think every generation looks at the next generation and thinks they're crazy. Um, you know, this is just one of those things. It's like, well, yeah, maybe a little different, but guess what? Uh, there's a lot to it. It can be fun. There's there's a lot of people interested, and like let's let's uh, t- take advantage of this thing. You know, one thing that I was going to ask you, and this is kind of a uh, kind of wild. I mean, I wonder what this changes for you know the future of of like physical motorsports. Like, you know, if these are some pretty big numbers and stuff that we're talking about with the, with e NASCAR and. You know, what does that do to the, you know, the future racing programs out there, like, and the future sponsorship programs? I think there's enough money to go around, honestly. Um, but I wonder if you'll see some companies shift their focus. Yeah, you will. And, you know, that's the truth, you know, now. And, you know, do, do I ever think that the eNASCAR Daytona 500 is going to pull better viewership than the real yeah. Daytona 500? Absolutely not. I, right. I don't think that will ever happen, but right. um, I do think they're going to continue to grow and you think, oh, you know, well, Daytona, they get 100,000 people show up to watch that, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I start looking at them like, man, you've seen the pictures, like, there's some of these, uh, you know, League of Legends or something like that, you'll see a picture and they'll be in a basketball arena, those 30,000 people, and it's packed with kids mm-hmm. watching a big jumbotron, a kid sitting on the floor playing these, you know, I mean, the you know, professional esports against each other live and in real time. So it's yeah. like, I don't know, man. It's I it's got some potential. Don't, I, I would be a fool to say, you know, to try and uh, you know, to try and guess where this yeah. thing's headed. But uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty wild, man. I would say if anybody's teetering on whether or not they should get in, get in now because uh, you never know uh, where, where things are going to be in five years. I can promise you, it's going to grow. It's not going to regress. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um. Well, my next question here is for people who are listening, if they are thinking about kind of dabbling with this stuff or learning more, I mean, what, what do you recommend? Where do they go? Uh, I think the biggest thing um, is anybody can do it. I mean, Seth Cantero, he's a good friend of mine. You know, his kids, you know, he's just a Dakar. He's, you know, part of that Red Bull off-road program. He, he texts me, and Seth and I text all the time. He goes, dude, he's like, I want to get into the iRacing. So he literally went out and bought, you know, they bought a used sim rig from somebody, I think. And, uh, you know, and he, he got that thing and, um, I got it hooked up and I gave him a code, uh, I racing because of who he is. And he's, you know, he's a legit race car driver. They gave him a code, you know, so they comped his subscription, I think. And, uh, you know, he got on there and, uh, I joined, we've got a private, uh, forum for our team and I gave Seth kind of, uh, I let him in so he could pick these guys brains and he was horrible, but. It was one of those where he just wanted in and, yeah. uh, you know, he, you know, he's getting better, but he just wanted in. But honestly, if you want in the easiest thing, go to iRacing's website, you can check it out. Uh, you can, you know, and you can get started there, go to uh best buy or Walmart or Amazon and, uh, you know, get to get a, uh, some kind of Logitech force feedback wheel or something. And, uh, you know, you probably want one that's not 50 bucks. You probably want to spend, you know, 150, 200 bucks, but yeah. you don't have to get anything crazy fancy and, Honestly, just sign up and start racing, you know, and you're, you're going to learn a lot. Um, and, you know, that's the easiest way to get into it. You know, I'm not saying you got to go out and buy a $25,000 rig to get started because you can get started with 150 bucks. Right. No, that's that's awesome. And right away, get a hold of somebody and say, sponsor me, bro. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah. That's what not to do. <laughs> get, probably, probably send him a DM and be like, send him a DM and be like, uh, sponsor me. Yeah, dude, yeah. I get those all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was actually, uh, I'll, I'll share a, a quick story here. I was at my local uh, power sports dealer here, um, and I was talking to him. Just that I'm, I'm kind of looking at maybe a, a snowmobile for my wife. Uh, it's just a rough time to buy snowmobiles because, in, in like in Michigan, because the snow hasn't been great. But um, yeah. either way, I was at this dealer, and I was, you know, they asked me about what I what I do, and I talked a little bit about the show and. And uh, they were like, well, how'd you get started? I was like, have you ever had somebody walk up to you <laughs> and be like, sponsor me, bro? And they're like, oh, my gosh, like daily we get that, you know, in a dealership. It, and uh, <laughs> he just started laughing about it. And I told him a little bit like, well, that's what that's why I started a show. And 
he's like, oh my god, they like people literally act that exact way. Sponsor me, bro. Like I'm not your bro. Like <laughs> I don't even know you. Why are you asking me to sponsor you? Like give me some, give me a minute. But um, all right, sorry, I digress. I, no, it's funny because <laughs> I get emails all the time, and I used to respond to all of them, and I I honestly got so much I couldn't respond to all of them, but I get literally emails through our website you know what i mean sponsorship hey you know would you be willing to spend five grand to sponsor my imc modified at this local dirt track in iowa i promise i'll uh give your name over the pa or something like that and I'm like literally they write it like that you know and they'll i've got you you know a picture yeah. of a car and i'm just like oh this is so not how you do this yeah so uh that yeah, that's well. Honestly, that's one thing I love about your show because I've been able to tell people they're like, "Oh, you know how do you get sponsored?" I'm like, "Listen to Josh's show. Seriously, go listen. <laughs> so go back to the archive and start at episode number one." <laughs> that's so funny. That's what that's what I do too. Because a lot of people message me just for advice and thoughts, and that. one of the first things I ask is, "Have you listened to the show yet?" And sometimes people are like, "No, no." Like I just uh, was checking things out. I was like, "Look, I just at least listen to one episode and then come come talk with me after that." Um, but you know, this, this conversation here just reminded me of something that was really funny, uh, and a bit awkward that happened that I'm part of this like industrial design group, um, in Michigan here. And they were doing, they do these big events. They just keep growing and growing and growing. And we were at one of these events and that, you know, now they've got like multi-tiered sponsors and stuff. And, you know, companies are, they basically are using this to attract, um, you know, industrial design talent into their, their companies. And so they've got, you know, their title sponsors and then there's, you know, gold or their platinum, gold, bronze sponsors, all that stuff. Well, the, the main presenter went up there and part of this big deal is you're supposed to, you know, go through your thank your sponsor just like a podium speech, right? And, uh, you know, she was going through all these different things and then at the end she's like, Oh, I forgot to thank your, thank, thank all the sponsors. Uh, but they're right here. Here's a picture of them. And like that just got off the stage and literally there was, there was a, Somebody was next to me. I don't know what company they represented, but they were probably a decision maker at this, at this other company. And she was like, and that's why we didn't sponsor them. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, no. Oh, like I know too much about what, what that really means, what you just said. Uh, but either way, it was, it was just one of those moments where I was like, yep, that was the drop the ball, little ball drop action. <laughs> yeah. Or my favorites when I do, they actually do send a, uh, an email or something, and it was a total copy and paste job. And they'll, oh yeah, they'll you, you, yeah. Well, you know they sent it to thirty companies because they'll send it to me with the wrong name in there. Yeah, like, exactly. It, you, you know, it's just like oh my gosh. I remember somebody was on on the show. I got I got. It's been a while. It was an older one where someone they, they it was early on in their career and they did that and it was like you know sw- flopping monster and Red Bull or something. And they were telling me like it was the most embarrassing thing ever because the company responded and said, "Hey, uh, appreciate reaching out, but you know we don't want to work with our competitor on this." <laughs> and they were like, "Yep, learn from that one. Never do that again." Uh, yeah, it happens and it is funny. uncomfortable. Um, well, hey Jim, this was awesome. Um, I feel like we got a, a good view of esports, um, and we got a bunch of bonus stuff here, just about all the cool stuff you've been you've been up to lately. Um, but I think we're gonna start wrapping up right now. Um, what would you say is something that people really need to take away from this show if they forgot everything else we talked about? Like, what's that one thing they need to remember? Oh man! Well, in regards to esports, I would say just uh, just get started. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just do it. But that, that that's that's the case with anything. You know, for January this year, I don't know when this is going to air, but we're recording in January. It's fresh year. You know, it's like twelve mm-hmm. months from now. You can be a complete different person doing something completely different. You know, so it's mm-hmm. like you know, start start now, and you know, things a year from now. You know, whether it be starting a podcast, YouTube channel, going after sponsors, go getting into esports. You know, just start now, and uh, you know, and uh, you never know where things are going to be in uh, 12 months. And I guess big takeaway from everything else we talked about, though, would uh, honestly, I think uh, the biggest thing is, is, you know, look at uh, just look at uh, like uh, all those people I mentioned, Grinkowski and Dale and Arginia, mm-hmm. you mentioned Shaq, Sarah Price, like diversify, even if you're a race car driver, uh, if you're a motorcycle racer or whatever, if you're listening to the show, um, you know, obviously you probably race something and you're looking for sponsors. Tell them, start diversifying. You know what I mean? Uh mm-hmm. 
get your hands in as many possible things as you can. You know, and it's not always easy, but just uh, just do it because it's going to make your program that much stronger. Yeah, yeah. And for people who are interested in podcasts, I did a show. I think it was episode two hundred. So it's very recent uh, where I talk about that, just like how to start a podcast, the very basics. Um, you know, give it a shot. Like Jim said, it's uh, it's a good thing to do. And I, I read this book. I've actually got it in front of me. Uh, it's just kind of a reminder to this. It's um, it's called The Lean Startup. I'm I pulled it open right now. It, it's written by Eric Reese, and it's mostly around like starting a company, um, building a product, whether it's digital or you know or physical product. But basically, it just says is if you're not embarrassed by like your first whatever product it is that you put out there. So if it is a you know new podcast, if you're not embarrassed from episode one, then you waited too long to release it. Um, so basically his, his whole methodology is get it out there, get started, do something, tweak it, modify it. You know, I, I mentioned Gary Vanderchuk and he uh, kind of talks about the same thing. Like just get started out there. You might have six viewers for 10 years, but like, you, you got started. Oh, so I, I fully agree. That's it. 27 people tuned into my first ever show. And, uh, yep. you know, now we've got some big, uh, big announcements coming this year in regards to where it's going to be airing, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of those, just get started, you know, I'm, I'm eight years into this rabbit hole and I have no end in sight, but, uh, uh, you know, you're 200 plus episodes in now. And, you know, like you said, just get started. I listen to my first stuff and I'm like, Oh my God, that's bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'd like to think we got a little bit better over the years. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Awesome. Well, hey, again, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, but what's the best way for people listening to connect with you? Um, just uh, at Jim Beaver 15 is all my personal social media. Um, and then we've also got uh, obviously Jim Beaver Esports. It's at Jim Beaver Esports uh, on all major platforms. Also got uh, a couple of other Instagram accounts at Down and Dirty Show and uh, at Dirt Daily Media. Uh, just a fun kind of viral video Instagram that we've got. And then I think it's up to about 50,000 followers. So, uh, and then I uh, got to give a shout out to, uh, I guess, Mia Chapman, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the girl I'm uh, uh, kind of managing. Go give her a follow. I think uh, she's, got, she's doing some rad stuff for Red Bull. I think you guys, you guys will dig it. Definitely. Well, it's time to close this one out. So I'm going to leave you with this. Have fun and ride safe. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to this show, whether it's on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss upcoming guests and upcoming episodes. And then follow us on social media. We're on all of the platforms. You can find out the most content, though, on our Facebook page. That's where we do our live videos to get some insider access to upcoming guests you can also check out the sponsored rider club on facebook it is a support network where you can ask questions about best practices and get feedback from our audience a special thanks goes out to our sponsors four wheel parts amsoil solder weld bold racing top the podium.com and crash addict industries and i also want to shout out some of our other partners mbrp hmk usa Sudboy traction and high octane coffee I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.